Before we get into today's video, I did want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody, anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. We are back at it again with a new week and a new video. So today's video topic or situation comes out of good old Florida, Daytona Beach to be exact. And this happened back in 2018. And I found this case so intriguing because you know how like a lot of the time, especially on Fridays when we do like more of our deep dive types of cases, you can kind of see a buildup somewhere. Or you can see these different family history or you can see a pattern forming from childhood or family members. But this is one of those cases, and, and to be honest with you guys, there's not a ton of information out there, but from what I can find, there's just like no warning signs. It just happens out of nowhere. So I'm gonna do like I always do. I'm gonna tell you guys what happened the best of my ability, and then at the end, I'm gonna give y'all my opinion, but I really wanna know what y'all think as well. So back in 2018, a young man named Damon Kemp, by all means, was a great young man. He was a straight A student. He lived with his mom, who was a security officer, and he was very close with his family, and he had lots of really good friends. He was born in New England, but raised in Stone Mountain, Georgia. His mother, Robin Howard, was very proud of him. According to her, she said that her son loved to dance, play basketball, and decided to go to college to become a music engineer so he could make his own beats. With that being said, Damon's mother and family and friends allegedly have said that there is no way that Damon could have committed the acts that he was accused of. See, on December 7th of 2018, there was some cops out in the neighborhood and they were investigating a home invasion. While they were out there investigating, an out of breath Damon came running up to them <gasps> and he confessed something to them that shocked them. Damon said to the officers, I killed my friend. The cops, shocked and not knowing what to do, they took Damon into custody, but Damon didn't tell them where or what or how or anything. So they had to investigate. And 15 hours later is when they found out that Damon once lived in an apartment, 434, at the complex where they were investigating this home invasion at. When the officers got to the apartment at about 7 p.m. later that same day, they found a bullet hole in the door and a shell casing at the stair nearby. Inside, officers found the bodies of Trey Ingram and his childhood friend Jordan Patton. The two guys had actually came up to visit Damon and they were both 19 years old and both had multiple firearm wounds to their bodies. Trey, known to his friends as Ace, was a local amateur boxer who trained at the boxing club in Daytona Beach. He was a former high school football star and he'd also been a student at Bethune-Cookman University and was working towards returning to school according to the neighbors. Damon was known to work out at the same boxing gym, usually with Trey according to a trainer there. He said as far as he knew, the two were really good friends. Damon had been roommates with Trey at the Jade Park Apartments until Trey told him to move out. See, back in October, Damon moved in with a man named Quincy that he met while attending BCU in 2017. Quincy told investigators that Damon had been acting weird and super paranoid and was telling people that there were certain people that were out to get him. They were following him and Damon was acting just strange, bizarre, and everybody was uncomfortable. Quincy said that at one point, Damon even tried to crawl into the bed with him because he said he was scared that there were people out to get him and that he needed to sleep with Quincy. Quincy freaking out basically yelled at him and said, get out of my bed. Like you're not sleeping in the bed with me. I ain't your mama or whatever he said to him, but he kicked him out of his bed, but he 
thought that it was really strange. Damon would then ask Quincy to drive him to Trey's apartment, which is where he used to live, at around 7.15 p.m. on Thursday. At about 1.50 a.m. Friday, someone knocked on the door of Korea Mokdar in apartment 422. Korea thought it was his roommate knocking on his door, but when he opened it, he found Damon pointing a firearm in his face. Can you guys imagine, this is like two, almost two o'clock in the morning. You think your roommate's knocking on the door, you open the door and here's this man holding this to your face. Correa would tell investigators that Damon was threatening to shoot him. He was able to calm him down and get Damon backed up out of the doorway enough so he could shut the door, lock it, and call the police. That's when the cops arrived to the apartment to investigate the home invasion and that's when Damon ran up to them and told them that he had actually killed his friend. Also, about 50 feet away from the police saw Damon, they found an unloaded 40 caliber Glock, and they also found an empty extended magazine and $400 in cash elsewhere at the complex. Damon was also captured on the police body cam, like acting erratic and saying stuff like, to be honest, I was going to, and then it's like illegible, you can't really hear what or understand what he's saying. And with my friend, and the ace Trey Ingram, but I shot him. Like it was just so erratic what he was like. He was gonna do something with him, but he shot him instead. Trey's half sister, Ladoris, would later tell the police that about 1 a.m. on that night, she had been playing an online video game with Trey from her home in Clearwater when she heard a man enter Trey's apartment. She said that she heard Eve, which was Trey's dog, begin to bark like crazy because somebody had come into the apartment. Then she heard her brother tell the dog, calm down, it's only day day, which, Sounds like it was date for Damon. Oh, it's calm down, it's only day day. She knew that that was the nickname for Damon Kemp, so she wasn't concerned about it. Lodoris also said that she heard Trey ask Damon why he was pacing back and forth. So just from right now, what we know, we have this young man, Trey, who had his apartment, who had a beautiful life ahead of him, who was so close with his sister, she would come up and stay all the time. They would play video games with each other all the time. And then he was trying to help his friend, Damon. Another resident of the complex named Pedro said he heard a knock on his door, unit 411. He looked through the peephole and saw a man saying on his cell phone, I just killed he said he couldn't tell what the rest of what he said was, but the man that he saw outside matched Damon Kemp. Autopsies would later show that Trey suffered four gunshot wounds to his body, three in the chest and torso and one in the shoulder. Jordan Patton had been shot six times in the neck, lower back, and upper chest. So this whole time while the investigators are at the apartment complex finding all of this stuff, finding the, the two young men who were best friends growing up, Jordan and Trey were best friends, even since they were like in elementary school. They had Damon down at the police station, but they hadn't charged him with anything yet. They just had him run up to him being erratic and saying what he had done. So they held him down there at the police station until they could get the charges to come through and they did a press conference. Good morning. Uh, we're gonna do this press conference now in reference to the incident last night, I'm sure you're all aware of. We have, we were investigating a double homicide right now that occurred uh, last night around eight o'clock uh, at 500 Jimmy Ann Drive, the Jade Apartments. So it's an active investigation at this point in time. We uh, have two victims, males that, uh, uh, deceased as a result of gunshots. Uh, we have a person of interest that is uh, right now is not a threat to anybody. We know where he's at and we're still working with uh, the state attorney's office to work on some charges. And, uh, it's still, like I said, an active investigation. Give us some time to do what we need to do. Uh, I feel quite confident that justice will be served for our victims. Uh, and I'll open up the floor right now to any questions. Are We're not going to release at this point in time. It's active investigation. We, I can assure you this: he's. Uh, we know where he's at. He's. Uh, he's not going to be a threat to anybody. He won't be an issue to anybody. So, I hopefully here within the next 24 hours, we'll be able to release that once we finish up our part of the investigation. We're still working on a couple of things. These things are complex, and and we want to make sure we make a solid case and we cover every bit of the part of the investigation and make sure we process all the evidence. So that when it comes time to go to trial, if it does, we have a super, you know, airtight case and there's no wiggle room for anybody trying to wiggle out of this. I feel very comfortable that we are going to get justice for the families and these victims. Uh, this is a tragedy. 
and my main focus now is on those victims and their other victims' families also. They did eventually charge Damon with two counts of second-degree murder. And he was booked in the Volusa County Jail. He was also charged with burglary with assault, armed in a separate incident at the same apartment complex from the day before. Now, Damon's erratic behavior continued at his first court appearance the next day. Watch this. God! 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 You could hear the judge in the background trying to talk to him. There's people that believe he was faking at the time. I'm going to tell y'all what I think at the end, but there, the, a lot of people think that he was faking to try to get out of it at this point. But nevertheless, the judge ended up denying his bond and he continued to stay in the jail. Now this, a few days later, when Damon allegedly came down, is when he admitted that he was actually high on substances when he committed the crimes to his friend and his friend's friend. He was heard saying this on a jail phone call. He said, all I can remember is smoking weed. Maybe there was something in the weed or something like that, but I smoked some weed and that's all he remembered. Damon denied having any mental illnesses and said that he has never been suicidal or wanting to harm somebody else. He even said that he was being held in a mental illness uh, facility, part of the jail, and that he, he basically said that he didn't feel like he should be in there because he wasn't having any mental illnesses, that he thinks it was just from the weed that he smoked. Now for a bit of a plot twist, Jordan Payton's father, said that his the night that his son was shot, that he does not believe that Damon is the one that did that. He believes somebody else did it. He said that he believes that Damon was there, but wasn't the one that actually did the crime. George, Jordan's father, said that he believes that Daytona Beach police did not properly investigate. He said they should have gone out and knocked on every door at that apartment complex until they found the victims because they did not say my son suffered a long time before he passed. The medical examiner's report does not reference a time of death and Jordan had bullet wounds in the heart, arteries, and each lungs. George alleged that there were more people in Trey's apartment that night and based on a video chat his son had on Facebook, he added that Daytona Beach police had found two additional firearms at the scene and the police hadn't said anything about the additional firearms that they had found. So his dad is sitting here like, wait a minute, wait a minute. So Damon, y'all are saying Damon did this because he ran up and said that he done, that he did this to his friend, but Damon don't remember anything because he was so out of it, right? And that they found all these firearms at the scene. Like something just didn't seem right. And there was an apartment full of people. Where are all these people at? Like he just felt like that the investigators saw, okay, here's the man. He's, he's, he's acting kooky. He admits to it. We don't need to investigate anything else. And the father's like, something ain't right here. However, a Daytona Beach sergeant refuted Jordan's father's claims and said that the investigation was thorough and that, that, that he was wrong, that they did investigate and basically they had the right person in custody. So Damon was put in the psychiatric part of the jail and that is where he is still waiting to be tried. And get this, Damon tried in February of 2019 to fire his public defender and defend himself. So we already, we've seen this happen before. Now that's not a good sign. Okay. If he's in there and he's sober, unless they got him on some psych meds and now he wants to defend himself, like that's, that's not a good sign. His mother would beg the courts not to allow her son to defend himself. And he eventually withdrew his offer anyways and said, okay, never mind." Robin, his mother said that her son is not what the media is portraying him to be. And he is still waiting to go to court. So what do I think? Okay. I think that if there were other people there and there were multiple firearms found, that's suspicious. But I do wonder if Damon has any 
I want to say family history of schizophrenia, but I don't, I, but sometimes people don't know. They don't get checked. You know, sometimes people, you know, back in the day, we just thought people were, were crazy or, you know, whatever. They told, oh, that's just Bobby. He just talks to himself all the time. Or, you know, it, it could be a million different things, but we have from videos that we have done and research that I have done, very unprofessional, by the way, go do your own research, form your own opinion. It seems like though, especially at this age, because we saw the same thing with the boy in South Florida that ate the man's face off. But then again, it could have been laced with something, right? It could have been, or he could have done more. All I know is that if you take substances, okay, in the state of Florida, for sure, and you commit a crime, you cannot go, oops, I was high because it's an illegal substance. You can't go, oops, I didn't mean to. Like, you're still going to be found guilty. But if all he did was smoke weed, I hope they drug tested him. Did they drug test him? I couldn't find that anywhere to see what all was in his system. Was there something more? I don't know. I, I tend to believe that Damon may have hurt somebody. Maybe not everybody, but somebody because he showed up at the neighbor's house with the the weapon in the guy's face. Do I think he was out of it? Maybe. But the fact that he turned around and tried to represent himself makes me wonder if there's that mental illness. And I, by the way, you guys, I am nobody. I'm, I have no kind of training in this. Please go Google research. I'm pretty sure we'll have professionals leaving comments down below. So don't take me as this is me giving any kind of diagnosis. Cause I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud with you guys. At, this is around the age when it seems like it starts popping up. And for him to, while he's been in jail for years at that point, at least a year, sober-minded to want to defend himself tells me something ain't right. That's why I told y'all in the beginning. This is one of those cases where you go, how do you have a straight-A student, okay, that had obviously had friends, did good, but started acting paranoid before was trying to climb into the bed with his other friend to sleep. That's the same exact stuff that we heard from the Austin Haruf case. So what do you guys think? Do y'all know about this case? Do you have any opinions? Let me know down below. I love you guys. I'll see y'all in the next video. I hope y'all have a wonderful week and thank y'all so much for being here. Bye. <laughs>